Good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending tonight, Thursday, December 15th, 2022, our regularly scheduled Board of Selectmen's meeting. Uh, I call our meeting to order and I ask that we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I ask that my fellow select people approve uh, a couple of uh, changes. Um, one would be an addition, which would be the uh, town clerk appointment. And then the other one would be to uh, move Kevin uh, Kelly up uh, to literally right after the uh, town manager's um, report so that he can enjoy the rest of his evening. Uh, that would be for item 9A. So is that okay with everyone? Go with me. Okay. Okay uh, with me, Dan. Okay, perfect. Okay. Our next section is our public comment section. Uh, this uh, section of the agenda is reserved for people in attendance who wish to briefly address the board. Um, the board requests that comments be limited to three minutes or less. Uh, people wishing to make comments should type comment and uh, your name uh, in the chat box and you will be recognized. Our first public comment is from Kevin Tulamary. Okay. That's hello. Uh, thank you, Chairman uh, Kevin Tulamary, 110 Kinney Road. And uh, I'd like to start with a couple questions. Uh, that, have you read the environmental and historical information supplied in the December 1st agenda? If you did, how can you proceed? If you did not, how can you proceed? You have publicly questioned my character, my motives, and the accuracy of the information I have provided. However, every source is documented and ignoring the facts is irresponsible and reckless. I urge the Board of Selectmen not to sign the contract with the BL companies. It is another step in a dangerous and destructive direction. The contract is site specific and as stated on page one, quote, the location of the project is at the corner of Kinney Road and Church Street, referred to below as the site. If you do sign this contract, you will be in violation of Connecticut deep best management practices that state a salt storage facility should not be located in the area, quote, where the groundwater has been classified as GAA or GA, unless it is not feasible to locate the facility in a less sensitive area, end quote. Several feasible options are available, including the plan stated in the 2014 Plan of Conservation and Development for combined maintenance and storage facilities with Parks and Rec and moving the transfer station and expanding on the current site. The importance of leaving the public works and salt storage at Old Colchester Road was recently reiterated by William Rizika at a meeting of the Hebron Green Committee. I urge the Board of Selectmen to respect the scientific training and the decades of experience Mr. Wazika has in road salt and groundwater contamination. He has made it clear that, quote, pollutants emanating from the proposed facility pose a definite risk to drinking well water quality to the homes on Kinney and Millstream roads, end quote. I'm also concerned that there has been no action by the town to address the historical issues raised. There has been has there been any action to investigate the potential eligibility for the National Register of Historic Places? Has there been an engagement of a cultural resource survey as recommended by the archaeologist Dr. Sarah Holmes in the State Historic Preservation Office? Moving forward with this contract without resolving these issues, I think would be irresponsible and dangerous step for the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next, next public comment is Andrea Latanzi. Okay. Good evening. This is Andrea Latanzi, and I live at 151 
Cannon Drive in Amston. And um, for the past several months, um, I have attended um, I, I've attended as a concerned citizen, BOS meetings, PNZ meetings, public uh, building committee meetings, and there has been much discussion about this proposed project for the uh, public works. Um, as citizens have spoken in opposition of the project by letters to BOS, in person through meetings, letters to the editor at the September 19th public information meeting. Citizens have cited concerns, questions, and raised red flags as to the economic, historical, and environmental factors. Uh, partisan 36 year, excuse me, nonpartisan 36 year experience hydrogeologist William Morzika stepped up and forward to voice his informed opinion of, the, of his opposition. Citizens have offered alternate plans in writing and, in, and verbally. The current proposal does not adhere to the current POCD. Week after week, citizens and even board members have asked about where is plan B? What is plan B? Last week, I brought forward from the public building committee meetings from 2013 and older than that, that document the original plan involved keeping the transfer station and cold storage at Old Colchester and moving operations to Burnt Hill. In fact, that land was specifically purchased with this intention in mind, which is what was documented in those meetings in the minutes. Those are not my words. Um, the, Board of Selectmen have continuously, week after week, dismissed these questions, facts, concerns, and evidence. I am asking again tonight, when will you address these issues? When will you present a reasonable proposal? When will you present a plan B? Thank you very much. Thank you. Next. Uh, Next yes. public comment is John Barron. Yes. Thank you, uh, Donna, very much. Uh, and thank you for this opportunity to pose some questions. Uh, Hebron has had a town manager since 1990 and a professional planner since 1995. As a longtime resident uh, living on 33 Cone Road and also having farmland on Burnt Hill Road, uh, I am rather concerned that there is no plan B, that this does suggest that we have invested in paid staff where we have been back, backed into a corner. Specifically, and I asked this on September 19th, and I ask again, what will happen to the public works accommodation uh, on Kinney Road if there is a 100 to a 500 year a uh, storm surge such as was seen in Florida recently and throughout much of the lower uh, south of the United States with global warming. My last question is one that is really important to me. My family has paid taxes for over 100 years in this town. My family is committed to the land, to the history, and to the place of Hebron in local and state government. I hope that my grandchildren will be able to enjoy the land in Hebron. So what will happen, what site will be used 50 years from now when the current public workstation is no longer up to date? Unless there's a plan for the future, there's no future. I thank you. Thank you. Next, next up is next up is Lily Rhodes. Um, thank you for taking my uh, comments. I would like to support the previous two uh, comment commentators. Um, I'm concerned about what will we do um, if Kinney Road is determined to not be um, acceptable. I would prefer that Kinney Road in the center of town. Um, be developed in a way that's more uh, public access, uh, feet on the street, uh, support taxable uh, 
ventures than Public Works, but uh, in the event that Public Works um, uh, does happen there, what will happen in, as John Barron and others have said, uh, in some number of years, 20, 30, uh, when we have to find another site. So I would really like to find out what the status is of the commitment to identify a Plan B site um, in the event that either now or some number of years in the future, um, we need a different uh, location. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Next. And uh, Rourke McCormick, did you have something to say? Yes. Okay, um, I'd right like ahead. to sort of support all the uh, previous comments that the Kinney Road site is not feasible for the reasons uh, the other commenters have outlined for the environmental concerns. Uh, we definitely need a new public works facility, but Kinney Road is not the place. There's We've brought up these issues about the water contamination, and I haven't seen any response from the town on how they would plan to address that. And besides that, just the cost of the facility I'm already paying you guys like over $6,000 a year in property taxes. I know it's going to go up when you put the bond out for this. So I urge the board to reconsider their proposal. Thank you. Okay, next. Andy. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So next on the agenda would be appointments and resignations. So the first one is Patch's correspondence from Maria Morale Wolf. She's a Democrat expressing interest in being appointed to the Parks and Recs Commission. I believe that she did attend a meeting. I'm not sure if she's in attendance tonight. I don't see the, the list. If she is, welcome. Um, and I'll turn it back over to you, Mr. Chair. Okay, I'll read the motion. Um, move that the Hebron Board of Selectmen appoint Maria Morale Wolf as a regular member of the Parks and Recreation Commission for a term to run until December 2026. Um, and of course we have her biography and all. So I believe that she has attended some meetings. So um, any, any discussion on that potential appointment? Hearing, yes, go ahead, uh, Pete. Oh, just to confirm, I, I was, she was at the last meeting I was at uh, on December 5th. So when I, you both assume that, I just want to confirm that um, she uh, definitely was in attendance uh, in the, at the last proxy rec commission meeting that I attended, which was on the 5th of December. Okay, great. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Uh, and I'm not sure who we have on. I know, uh, Mark. Uh, Peter. Peter Casper, aye. Uh, Tiffany. Tiffany Teeley, aye. Uh, it's Gail on. Uh, hearing myself, aye. So the motion does carry. Um, this is a new hey, system. So yes. Hey, and Mark Rivera, I also my my uh, the voices are coming in and out a little bit on me tonight. But Mark Ooh, Rivera, I. Perfect. Great. Okay. I I knew you were there, but then disappeared. Okay. Um, then we have the uh, town clerk. Do we have that that uh, motion? I do. Okay. So uh, that would be uh, to move. Do the Hebron Board of Selectmen accept Fran Skina Villeri as acting town clerk, effective February 1st, 2023, with the term to run until January 6th, 2026, I believe it is. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, it's Tiffany. I'm so sorry. I'm having serious computer difficulties, so I've had to join via phone. Um, I just wanted to say a quick word about um, Fran Villani. I think that 
we're incredibly fortunate to have someone, you know, ready in the wings um, to take over. Um, you know, when we unfortunately lose Carla Pomkowitz um, to enjoy her well-earned retirement, um, I know Fran very well. I think she's an exceptional community leader, um, and I think we're very fortunate that she's um, agreed to step into this role. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Um, I have yeah. something to say, Dan. Go ahead. Yeah, Fr Fran's a very competent person. She's been doing a good job in the office, and um, she has a lot of qualifications. Um, I'm sorry to see Carla go. I've known her for years, and she's done a great job, and I'm sure Fran's not going to miss a beat going forward. So um, I have complete confidence that she can do this job effectively. So I'm on board. Okay, great. Uh, Peter? Yeah, absolutely. This is fantastic. So I am full support. And just since I have this platform, I just would like to plug for the fact that I, I still don't quite understand why this is an elected position. Um, so maybe something we can talk about in the future. I know it's a charter issue and whatnot, but uh, this seems to be the type of position that should be structured within the um, employment um employment structure of, of the town manager's office. So that's just an aside. Um, I don't want to take that away from the fact that I'm very happy that we're able to move forward. And Carla's been great and, and wish her the best in retirement and happy that Fran is there for us. So very, uh, very much in support of that. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I do definitely agree with you, Peter. We did try to get the uh, charter change. It did fail, um, which I, I still feel is sad. Uh, we are extremely lucky to have, you know, Fran uh, step up. Um, and one of my fears is exactly as what was happening is what would happen if this does go to an election and you have no one who is really certified or qualified uh, to step into that role. It is, it is an important role. And this was one of the exact reasons why we wanted to try to get it, you know, through the charter as an appointed position but that being said we are very lucky to have fran and uh all those in favor signify by saying aye uh mark mark Rivera, hi uh tiffany tiffany Teeley, aye peter peter casper aye and myself aye so great thank you thank you fran hey, if hey, you're hey, out there hey dan one <laughs> one one uh response to your comment Maybe uh, you just heard three people, uh, you and Peter both would, would be, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yep. Well, may, maybe we need to revisit this and see if we can get a charter revision to make this appointed a position because I completely agree with you that this would be disastrous if we had an elected person who had no idea what was going on. So I think that the time has come that we revisit this and if it's possible, um, I would support us doing that, Mr. Chairman. Okay, and you know, charter revisions occur. Uh, well, there's there. I, I actually, I I will refer to Donna to let her say, but there is uh, procedures and time sequences uh, for when you do do uh, charter revisions, and uh, you know that there is a mechanism in place um so i'm not sure when our next charter revision would be but um it does something that is something that does occur every so many years i don't know if andy or donna wanted to weigh in on that yeah so we'll be we'll be placing that just because of the town clerk's position it's time to start talking about that anyways and what the board of second want to do i know there's a couple issues uh, and the charter that want to get discussed. I know Peter has a couple more. So we'll be putting that on the next uh, Board of Seconds agenda to start thinking about uh, if you want to open that up, if you want to do a full-fledged uh, opening 18 month, or we'll put all the information in the next agenda. You can start talking about it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next will be our town manager's report. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, during the holiday season, we're working on budgets, budgets being the Chatham Health District budget, CIP budgets, and department head budgets are going to start. They're going to go out. And then also the health insurance region eight uh, budgets. We're working on getting those numbers. So 
a lot of budget stuff. We had a meeting with Code uh, and the superintendent of Ram High School uh, and also the uh, town leaders from Andover and Marlboro to discuss uh, possible next steps on how to bring the community together moving forward in a positive manner. That went well. Uh, the EV charging stations uh, are being installed. Uh, Town Hall, uh, Parks and Rec, and the Senior Center. Uh, the people that are installing those will come in. There, there is going to be a charge. Uh, there's an app that you use, so we're going to work on that to see how much uh, the cost is going to be or what the charge is going to be, and we'll have to set up a, a checking account where the money goes into for the town. We'll have more information on that as it as we get it. Um, I'm meeting with a PR firm tomorrow. Uh, unfortunately, I was hoping to have them that information for tonight's meeting, but uh, I wasn't able to get with this person until tomorrow uh, regarding, uh, you know, possible help with a survey for the public works site along with um, just some PR stuff, you know. They did look at the website. They got the information that's posted thus far. They looked at the presentation that was given. And uh, so they'll come in and we'll have a conversation on what that might look like and get some, uh, at least some ideas and some numbers of what we, that might cost. That uh, firm, I think I sent the information out to the selectmen in an email. It's uh, DKA uh, Advertising out of Bloomfield. Uh, we've done some work with them through EDC and they were referred to me through our Eversource uh, contact. This is just informational at this point in time. It will be coming in front of the selectmen at a later date. Uh, the EDC has a request for a tax abatement in front of them from Jason Tunnell, who owns uh, Main Street, uh, where the flower girl has her bakery. Uh, and then also he's going to be building uh, another building in between the Legion in that building and he has one in the back. So uh, he's looking for a little bit of, of help. As anybody building anything right now knows, the costs have gone up quite a bit. So uh, a lot more than what he had expected. And that's all I had. Okay, thank you. Um, did we want to now do uh, um, Kevin Kelly? Yeah, I would ask that you talked about earlier that item yes. 9A regarding a grant be moved up to this uh, point in the agenda so Kevin doesn't have to stay on here with us uh, all night. Mm -hmm. Kevin, are you with us? Yeah, you want me to take it? Yes, please. Yeah, because I'm, I'm digging through my packet. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Um, as you all know, Hebron is a member of uh, Capital Region Council of Governments. And they recently put out a solicitation for another grant. It's called the TRIP grant, which is a Transportation Rural Improvements Programs. And that's targeted at the smaller towns uh, in our region. So we'd like to apply for a grant. I believe it's in your packet mm -hmm. for a pavement rehabilitation project on Jones Street. Uh, it's worth... Um, 1.1 million dollars and um, if you look in the packet it's the cost of the application is uh, 11,500 to VHB engineering and 10,000 to Nathan Jacobson associates to put together the application uh, it's very similar to what we did on Martin Road but we got the uh, grant to reconstruct that that's still in the process of design um, but this would be the same thing. We'd be responsible for the design cost and the administration, which uh, our uh, consulting engineer estimated at anywhere from fifty to one hundred fifty thousand dollars. If we are, if we uh, get the grant awarded to us, does anybody have any questions? No, actually, I read I read it all over. Um... I don't know. Does anybody have any any questions? I know I actually it looks. We've done this before. This is not the first time uh, for these types of things, and you know, it's one of the things that's helped us to do as good a job as we have on our roads, roadways, and 
so many other things in Hebron. It's a good opportunity for us because, as I said, they're trying to target some of this money to the smaller towns. Because usually in the region, the bigger towns like New Britain and Hartford and East Hartford, they soak up most of the, the grant money for these projects. So it's a good opportunity. And hopefully the competition won't be too severe. And hopefully we fare well in the application. I'll make the motion and open it up for discussion. Move to the Hebrew Board of Selectmen approve the grant application for a road rehabilitation project on Jones Street through the Transportation Rural Improvement Program, TRIP, through CROG, uh, and authorize Andrew J. Tierney, town manager, to prepare and submit such application. Uh, any further comments? Any further questions? Hearing none, uh, Mark? Mark Rivera, aye. Uh, Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Uh, Peter? Peter Casper, aye. And myself, Dan Larson, aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, going back to our old business. Um, Andy? Okay, so it looks like under item A, old business, item B would be the public works uh, building project, next steps. So unfortunately, I didn't get the the proposal from Nathan L. Jacobson until uh, after work yesterday, so first time this morning. And I, I believe I sent it out to the selectmen. So um, we're gonna probably just add this right to the next next agenda. Um, but we did get a proposal finally from uh, the engineering firm. I did have the information from B&L in the packet. I was hoping to have both of them, but I, like I said, I didn't. So BNL had submitted, you know, the schematics for building or designing the buildings, and that that price came in at sixty nine thousand eight hundred dollars. So we'll be able to talk more about that at the next meeting. I just want to make sure you had that. That did come in uh, in time to make it on into the packet. As I said, Nathan O. Jacobson came in today. They're the they're going to be doing most of the work. So their price is roughly 175,000 to do all the work they need to do. So if you combine the two prices, you're looking at $244,800 to do a final design and get a final cost that would be voted on a referendum. Um, okay. That, that lists what would, it would be um, the Great Lawn, the road, the rotary, the public works facility, and then the road at this present time exiting out onto Keeney Road. So we'll continue that um, and put that on the next agenda. If, if you're okay with that, Mr. Chairman and, and the board. Of yes, please. Nope, that's fine. And then the third thing, once again, I stated earlier in my town manager's report, uh, I'm going to be meeting with the um, a Todd Collenbach. Uh, it says, hi, Andrew. Thank you for making time to talk with me yesterday. I reviewed the public meeting presentation on the town's website today with which a thorough and provide a good explanation of the project planning and history i would welcome the opportunity to speak with you again to discuss best case scenarios for next steps in the municipal process of moving the project forward and prefer time and a preferred timeline for that process i can literally foresee making some recommendations for message strategy development and additional presentation materials and a communication outreach and engagement plan, along with a possibility of a public opinion survey, all leading up to a referendum. Please let me know when you might want to schedule another call or a meeting, which I have for tomorrow at your convenience. In the meantime, I have attached a brief overview of our firm and our capabilities. And I believe I also set that out yes. to the Board of Selectmen. So mm -hmm. once again, we'll add those three things to uh, the next agenda, that information will be in the packet when it goes out so the public can have it as well. Like I said, unfortunately, during the holidays, this stuff, it's, it's hard to get it in in a timely manner when we send the packet out. So it'll be like the first glance, and we'll discuss it at the next meeting if that works for everybody. Okay, beautiful. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and just as a edification you know i did attend the uh 
meeting that that gentleman from you know, the retired person from DEP, and he's never worked with any of the, the facilities under the, the, the type of structure that we're planning on. So he really didn't have much to comment about it. But when explained to him what we were planning on doing, he did uh, verbally indicate that it did seem workable. Um, you know, he was talking about some monitoring wells, this and that. So, uh, and I did read that report. So, um, and even there, um, so as I say, yeah, we did do our homework. Um, okay. I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Yes. For Andy, <clears throat> just thinking, I, I, I just don't have a good uh, comfort level in this. When you pay for engineering services and all that, the 200 plus thousand, it, how much of that is transferable relative, I mean, because I know each site is unique, but say over time, this ends up going to a different site. Are we starting all over with those same cost structure, that same cost structure to get um, uh, an idea of, of cost or that same prep cost that you just described over 200,000 or is like 75% of it transferable because it's the actual structure and the parking lot and things like that. So we're not having to sort of pay 200 and something thousand dollars every time we want to figure out the cost of this project. If, if again, I'm just thinking, if there are changes or alternatives, does that cost kind of continue to replicate itself? You know, that's a great question. So each site is unique to itself, but I don't know what the percentage of the design, but yes, a lot of it would still be, be you know, valid. The building's not gonna change right. uh, okay. the footprint, but you know, elevations, cuts and fills, things like that would be specific to different sites, but a lot of it that's designed uh, for the buildings would, would still be usable. Okay, all right, thank you. Any other questions? I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, please. Um, I'd like to understand where the money comes from to pay for the proposal. Um, what line item is it in the budget and will the upcoming budget reflect this expenditure? Thank you. Yes, another great question. That money is not budgeted. We would look to budget that money. It would have to be approved by the Board of Selectmen and then we'd go to the Board of Finance and we would look to budget that. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, moving on. Um, you wanna get into this one? The uh, Yes. Yeah. yeah. So the next item is amend bid award for small city Stonecroft building project. So at the August 18th, 2020 board meeting, the selectmen awarded a contract for the Stonecroft building project to a preferred construction in the amount of $1,395,000. The project was bid April 22nd, 2022 as part of the final contract review and approvals from the state of Connecticut. A preferred updated the proposal reflecting current costs after negotiations with the contractor. The construction contract has increased to $1,435,766, which is an increase of $40,766 additional dollars due to increased costs for materials and labor. The exterior apartment doors, screen doors have been removed from the scope of the project due to insufficient funding. We are currently awaiting review of window and generator specifications, which the windows uh, did come in, and Donna's gonna speak to the number in a second. I know it's blank, uh, and that would be for the generators, but there's a proposed motion there, but Donna would give you the figure um, that we're looking to uh, add in there to not to exceed. Um, we are, and Peter Testa, our consultant, is here with us tonight, too, if there's any questions on the project, the scope of the project, or the, the changes. But we are confident in using that number, the 1435766 for the contract, and hoping that we can get the approvals in place and have Andy sign the contract with a preferred by the end of the year. Peter, I don't know if you have anything to add. 
Yes, yes, Donna, thank you. Uh, and Andy, actually, absolutely perfect description of what's going on here. As everybody knows, the you know, every day the price is a new a new price. You know, you pull up to the gas pump and it's something different. But we've been working with A Preferred and, and we've had this thing out to bid, like you say, uh, in, in May. Uh, we had a 30 day hold on the bid documents because the prices are so volatile. And, you know, of course, it came in, uh, you know, $500,000 or so over budget. But we've been working ever since then with uh, DOH and CHFA and Tana Hebron uh, to, to continue to make this deal happen. And we're, we're, we're right here. You know, we, we finally have a firm number. We did do some reduction. We had to do a reduction in scope and work and budget. But as Donna mentioned, as Randy mentioned, the only thing we've uh, eliminated is the uh, uh, entry doors and the storm doors. And they're actually the second means of egress for the residents coming out of their bedrooms. And the decision was made to do that as opposed to the generators, because the generators is a big emphasis with DOH and so on and so forth. And it's, it's certainly a, a valid thing um, you know, to do at this time. And the doors are something that the housing authority could pick and choose at as time goes on, um, because it won't affect you know, the windows of the other items that were done. The generators are being done, all the site work. We're doing ADA renovations. We're going to create one uh, fully adaptable or accessible ADA compliant uh, unit in each of the uh, buildings and then in the main building in building D um, there's three units there now that vary in um, compliance to today's standards um, but the uh, housing authority has a plan in which to address those coming down the road so uh, we're, we're here and uh, it, it, I think we've got a hard number back that the contractor sent us I don't know if, if Don if you included that but you know, we got a, um, a written description from the contractor as to what is not in the bid. Uh, the town has uh, graciously uh, uh, donated uh, dumpsters and carting costs. We took care of some language on that. Um, um, and uh, so, yes, it's been a, a, a collaborative event from day one, that's for sure, and an ongoing battle. So, but we're... Um, that's it. So the hope is that uh, it gets approved tonight and we sign the contracts next week. I, I think our tentative date is the 28th. Um, I haven't issued an email on that, but I will upon ratification and approval of this, if it should go through. And uh, that's it. So thank you very much. Thank you, okay. Peter. If anybody has may any I, questions, I'm happy to answer them. May I speak? This is Florence O'Sullivan. Um, sure, sure, uh, Florence. Thank you. Um, I'm chairperson of the Hebron Housing Authority, and I just wanted to let everyone know that this uh, final number has gone through so many iterations that it is almost mind boggling. We have had in excess of 10 uh, Zoom meetings uh, going over this, that, and everything with this uh, contractor and um, also with the state. And the state has told us that they are at their max so we really do need an approval for this one million four hundred thirty five thousand seven hundred sixty six dollars so i urge you to say yes please okay i'm going to read the motion then we'll open it up to uh discussion uh move the hebrew board of selectmen amend the bid award for the stromcroft building project to a preferred construction llc of bridgeport connecticut to an amount not to exceed $1,435,766 and authorize Andrew J. Tierney, town manager, to sign contract documents and other necessary documents relating to the project. Um, any discussion? Uh, Andy? Yes. You gonna you gonna call that question? Yeah, I've, I've opened I've opened for discussion. Uh, Peter, did you have discussion? Nope. Ready to vote? Oh. I'll call the okay. question. Okay. Uh, hearing no no discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, Mark. Mark Rivera, aye. Uh, Tiffany. Tiffany Teeley, aye. Peter. Peter Casper, aye. And myself, Dan Larson, I. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you, everyone, for uh, your flexibility. I know this is the third time, so uh, 
this is it, third time's a charm. We'll hopefully sign this thing up on, uh, we'll sign this up on next week. Thank you all. Okay. Thank Happy you. holidays, everybody. Same to you. I'm out. Uh, okay. Our next item would be, I believe, our, uh, is there any other old business at this point? Okay, hearing none. Uh, we already discussed the Transportation or Rural Improvements Program, uh, our draft agenda. Again, as always, if anybody has anything they need added or, or what have you, uh, get into town staff. Chairman Larson, it's Donna. Um, just yes. want to mention that we're we're looking to transition away from the go to meeting platform to Teams. So we're hoping to maybe do a couple of um, tests with the selectmen if if you feel the need, and then to start holding our meetings on the Teams platform starting in January. So just to give you a heads up. Okay. Is it a similar <laughs> it, type platform? It's similar and it should be um, easier to use. It should be easier to use. I know we've seen a lot of changes with the GoToMeeting platform recently. So we can um, run a couple of mock test meetings for individual members if, if they feel they want to just run through something before the uh, January 5th meeting. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Perfect. Uh, any other new business? Here Dan, I, I don't know. Yes, Dan, it's ahead. Mark. Um, I'd like to get something uh, to the next uh, agenda, some new business. It doesn't have to be discussed tonight, but I wanted to. Okay. Uh, so, We've been trying to keep up with the um, police accountability bill, and every time you look into it, there seems to be something else that's going to cost uh, the town money. So by the spring, we have to become accredited to exist as a police department, as does every other town and city in the state of Connecticut. So I've been looking into it, and smaller towns our size, like Marlboro and Lebanon and around us, um, are hiring a, a police uh, law firm, an expert, in getting this done. So the cost is fifteen to twenty thousand dollars, and if we don't do it, we will lose our police department like everybody else. So here, here's another uh, another mandate handed down by the police accountability bill that we uh, we can't ignore and we have to do it. I'm done. <laughs> Well, and here again, state in your pockets. It's a good thing they pay for everything. That's what the ad said. They they right. pay for all of this. Yeah, right. Um, and, at any rate, and I, don't, yeah, yeah, I, I don't see how it improves anything. It's just more bureaucracy. Um, but it, it's it's mandatory, so we have, we have to do it. Yeah, well, I, as I say, I would suggest you know get a hold of Andy, uh, sit down, Andy and Donna, to work out whatever the the parameters are for this um you know so that we can then talk about it and move it forward i guess um so just try to you know again i know holidays are coming up but if you can find a time with andy so that it can get you know okay gone through uh, and, and worked on thanks dan you're welcome um okay there is no consent agenda items tonight i know that makes everybody heartbroken um so we are don't have anything on that to do uh we have our liaison reports and there was one thing that and I, i'll do it as a kind of a I just I, actually I can do it as as the second public comment. So um, I guess go right to our laser reports. Um, Mark. Yeah, I just wanted to 
make a comment about um, Ram and the recent incident and yeah, give some uh, some accolades to some certain individuals who did a f fantastic job at that. Um, the Hebrew Police Department and the resident trooper, uh, Bryce Reed, were all thrust into that investigation. And those things aren't always easy or comfortable to do. Um, they were at kind of a standstill for a while, and Officer Ricky Martinez got one of the individuals who was president when the noose was being put up to confess that he was there, and he described what happened while everyone else was um, denying that they were involved in any way. So that pretty much cracked the case. The uh, school resource officer um, wrote some fantastic reports. They worked well with the courts. Um, our, our resident troopers, but I know there's a lot of paperwork and a lot of investigation to do there to put that all together and um, make sure that nobody's uh, offended, but people have consequences for actions that they take that are reprehensible. So I just wanted to make that comment and people have a right to protest and um, bring attention to certain matters that they feel are important. And um, the, uh, the Hebrew Police Department and town officials were very supportive and all that happened. So um, it was really a great job and I got to witness all that firsthand. So I just want to make that comment, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Tiffany? Yes, um, Green Committee met um, last week and um, the committee recommended unanimously um, to acquire the 115-acre O'Connor Trust open space property. So it's three parcels. Um, a significant portion of the property fronts along the unimproved portion of Chittenden Road. Um, so that acquisition would remove any potential town costs to improve that town-owned unimproved portion of the roadway. Um, the property is very unique. It has significant wildlife, and so that's been forwarded to Andy for, um, I'm assuming, our consideration at some point. Um, the Green Committee also met and had a robust discussion um, about uh, the DPW project, as was mentioned, with Bill Ardika. Um, and I believe this upcoming Sunday is the last Sunday for the Swap Shack. So if you have any swapping or need for last minute Christmas items, um, that would be the day. And that's what I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Uh, Peter? The Board of Finance uh, is meeting actually as we speak. So um, I don't have an update there. The uh, Parks and Rec Commission met, as I mentioned earlier in the meeting on December 5th. Our reaffirmed officers, Ken continues to be the chair of that. He does a great job. And so uh, they, he continue, he'll continue to be the chair of that. Uh, they updated uh, programs. Everything seems to be really uh, going very, very well over there. They did update some of the, uh, you know, how the projects are going with the ARPA project updates. And um, there was uh, a good discussion around um, the organization for the, the youth football is gonna add some enhancements to the, um, to the football field up there and uh, to align with the requirements of the league that they're in and maybe provide better, you know, continue to improve the accommodations and experience for the players and the fans and the coaches. Um, but as a reminder, it's, you know, they pay for it. And in fact, we'll provide some support, you know, uh, with installation, but for the most part, they'll pay for it. And then it becomes in essence a gift to the town because that property is still town property. So that was interesting. Uh, Dialogue and continued good improvement from that organization and, and support there. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Okay. Um, myself, I had a conflict with the uh, Hebrew Historical Properties thing. Um, I can't be at two meetings at once. I, I know it's hard to believe. Um, but uh, so I have nothing to report as, as a liaison. Um, Andy, did you have anything? Chatham Health or anything? Well, the WPCA is still moving forward. They moved down to that further down pump station on 85 by the uh, airline trail. Uh, they started that one. Uh, we're buttoning up the one by the garage at the end of 207. So we continue to make progress on that. Uh, Chatham Health, uh, they're, they're still doing uh, clinics as long as people are showing up. Uh, they're still giving vaccinations. Um, other than that, we're, like I said, putting the budgets together for the uh, the towns that belong. 
on the, on the clinics, do you have to go there or are they planning any, uh, say here in Hebron or Marlboro or something other than East Hampton? Yeah, no, they do them in, in the towns. They'll do them in Portland, they'll do them in Hebron, they'll do them in East Hampton, uh, Marlboro. Uh, I think they had one at the senior center not that long ago, then in Colchester. So I can send you the list of where they're going to have them. It'd just be nice and maybe something to put up on the on the website, um, you know, j just as an informational for people, would be, I That's think would be good. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Uh, with that, we go back to public comment. Do we have anyone for public comment? Yes, Mr. Tomilary. Of course. Yes, uh, thank you again, Mr. Chairman, Kevin Tulamary, 110 Kinney Road. And uh, I was surprised by your summary of Mr. Warzika's comments that he suggested that the public works facility, quote, did seem workable at that location. Uh, everything that I've heard from Mr. Warzika, there's some, he has some very serious concerns over the contamination. Perhaps he has not worked with that type of facility, but it's the activities that surround the road salt shed, the truck traffic, uh, and the, the contamination that occurs from those types of activities. Perhaps not that's coming out of the facility itself if it's constructed correctly, but I think the risk to of contamination is still quite great. And I'm sure Mr. Warzika would reaffirm his statements that he made earlier that this activity does pose a risk to the area, to the groundwater and the drinking well water in the area. Uh, I know one thing that he did seem confident also is that if this does go forward, then the town should be proactive to provide town water to those houses that are in jeopardy. And I think it's important for the town to consider that. And really, listen, all we're asking for is some consideration from the Board of Selectmen, uh, that you know, people that are making these decisions, and you're hearing us when we're showing up to these meetings. But I have felt that there has been no consideration for us whatsoever at any step in this year and a half long process that we've already been going down. So please, Consider if you must put this facility in, you have to consider providing us with town water so that you, we can protect our homes and protect our lives and really our own health, uh, the, the health of our neighborhood and the health of our town. So, but I'm gonna go back and watch that meeting Please video do. and uh, I look forward to seeing it. And I would also encourage this committee to invite Mr. Warzika to come speak to you directly instead of us going through another committee. Uh, his, you've had his name since September. Uh, he has important information. He has the experience. Uh, he's been the groundwater road salt contaminant expert for two and a half decades. So I think this is really an important issue and please give us some consideration and investigate these facts. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mark. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Tulumary, I, I don't want you to get the impression that we are insensitive. Um, I want to give you credit for working so hard and <clears throat> investigating everything, bringing um, information that you've uncovered to, to us. Um, you're being a good citizen and you're being involved. You're not apathetic. You're working hard for what you believe in. Um, I, to me, that sounds like a reasonable request to, to think of bringing um, water to the street. Um, I, obviously, that's kind of premature in me saying that, but in, in the interest of let's all work in together and we want to work with you and be sensitive to you and your neighbors, but it's also difficult for us getting all kinds of different information from different sources. And you, I kind of feel like a jury member who's listening to evidence and trying to figure out which evidence is correct. And I saw, I know some of my colleagues feel the same way. Um, but 
we have difficult decisions to make and we want to make the right decision. So I don't want you to think that your voice is not heard. And that's just not me saying that. Um, I know others feel the same way as me. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. And Someone Lily, else? Lily yeah. Rhodes is next up. Lily, go ahead. <clears throat> I'd just like to reiterate my interest in hearing what alternatives are available in the event that the Kinney Road location becomes inappropriate for the Department of Public Works um, facility, which of course we know we need. We know we need a new Department of Public Works facility, but we're spending a lot of money on figuring out a cost estimate that I sure as heck hope is transferable to another location in the event that another location is identified. Thank you. Thank you. And next up is John Barron. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Um, this is an odd question and maybe I missed a point. How often has the town uh, utilize the services of a PR agency uh, in presenting information uh, to the public. Uh, and what exactly is the cost for this particular program to sell the public works uh, project at uh, Keeney Road? Uh, again, Andy would probably be the gentleman to, to answer that but at this point in time i don't think we've got anything definitive in writing as to what this is going to cost we're still trying to uh you know get those figures together uh we're also trying to get a questionnaire that we can put out to the public you know so it's still a lot that's not been done yet and this is one of the problems you know people want answers but we don't have concrete answers yet and we don't just want to shoot from the hip. Oh, I completely understand that. But from past experiences, what have the costs been for hiring a PR agency? I don't, uh, I don't Mr. Chairman, this is Peter. I think, I mean, those are great questions. And I think, you know, we should really think about those in the context of the next uh, a, a meeting with when it's on the agenda and we're able to really sort of dig in more deeply because we'll just be speculating at this point, but we should just understand those questions and sort of keep those in mind as, as we prepare for the next meeting when it's on the agenda. So it, 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 am I to understand that this is a unique first time experience of using a PR agency? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if one was used during RAM, uh, some of the other major building projects. I don't know. I just don't know, John. Well, I thank you for your honesty. Um, and, you know, obviously I'm concerned. Uh, we live in an age of news, fake news, and um, information that just comes out of nowhere. And so knowing what information is coming directly from the Board of Selectmen is very important versus what information has been enhanced. And I hope that will be made clear um, in any public documentation. Yes. Thank yes. you for your promise of that. Okay. Uh, my public comment. Um, and everybody's going, oh, what's he going to say? Um, I actually met, and I can't think of her name now. Uh, uh, God, this is terrible. I can't think of her name. Anyway, she lives down at Stonecroft. And she was telling me about a gentleman that, and I just wanted to do a quick letter that I'd gotten from uh, Sharon. Uh, Frenchie, Mr. Claude Thibodeau, and Andy has actually met him and sat with him, I guess. Uh, this gentleman over the years has always heard about how extraordinarily helpful and generous Frenchie is. He is always available to call upon should any resident have a need. Not only has he created a year-round welcoming space, uh, the PPTP, not even going to go there, 
in the rear of Building E for the residents of Stonecroft Village, but he has also beauti uh, beautifully decorated two Christmas trees going into Building D, along with decorating his own unit, C2, during the uh, growing season. He has a large, beautiful, abundant garden and shares with Stonecroft's residents. Frenchie is truly an invaluable asset to the Stonecroft Village. He apparently just loves cleaning and and trimming and just what a great spirit you know and we're so lucky to have not only uh frenchy but people like him that do so much outside of what people normally see in our community so i just wanted to put my hats off to frenchy and i don't know andy did you want to say anything No, I just uh, echo your comments. He he was featured, I think, last year by one of the news stations because he, he during the snowstorms, he goes out and cleans off everybody's cars for them, the elderly people. And uh, they bought him, I think they they did a little skit where he was on the news and they bought him gloves and uh, so hat and new scrapers in order to assist in his duties during the snowstorms. But yeah, he's quite a guy. He was, uh, he served in the military and I think he, he he was considered, they call him tunnel rats. He, he ran a, a flamethrower. He was a smaller gentleman than that. That was a pretty tough assignment, if I know anything about, you know, battle. So he's uh, he's quite a quite a person, and uh, he's always willing to lend a hand. So we're lucky to have him. This holiday season, I want to thank people like Frenchie and all the people that, you know, we are such a fortunate town that there are so many people that just kind of go that extra mile without wanting any kind of accolades. They just do it because that's who they are. Yes, Donna. We have one more public comment. It's oh. um, Dave and Aaron. And then I think um, after them, we have Gabe and then Andrea. So oh. a few more public comments. Okay. So Dave and Aaron. Hi there. Um, we live at uh, 203 Mill Stream. Um, and I, I just, you know, I, again, I wanted to just echo what some of the other comments were made um, re regarding the proposal for the Kenny Road site. Um, one, I just wanted to say that um, taking advantage of the park across the street um, taking advantage of walking through uh, and seeing the history behind the site, the proposed site for the new facility. Um, understanding that there is a need for a new facility or at least a renovated facility. Um, I'm wondering if there will be an updated um, plan or proposal for alternate sites that could be uh, possible sites that can be looked at um, in case this Kenny Road site is not viable. As I say, we are looking at all things, but literally we have been years trying to find a piece of property of the size, the terrain, everything else that this would fit on. And there's just not much out there. Actually, there's almost yeah, none. And, yeah, and I, I hear oh, I mean, you say, I know it's been a very long time um, and I was, I'm wondering, cause I know there have been other suggestions, proposals for possibly splitting it up. Uh, and I know this meeting is not devoted to this topic and I'm, but I just wanted to just put this out there. Um, are there, have there, has there been serious talk about possibly splitting up the, uh, the needs for the public works uh, at various sites that are already located or doing things that might be more feasible for a less residential area, for an area that um, doesn't have the possibility that would that wouldn't have the danger of possible water pollution down the road, um, which you can't fix. Um, and destroying a piece of property in the end, I think that is pristine and, and something that's been around for thousands of years uh, and trees that are hundreds of years old. And I don't know, I feel like there's a piece of history here that we're, we're overlooking. And, I, and it's not, I'm not trying to downgrade any of the, the years of work that have been gone into this. I'm just 
I'm just worried about doing something in a town the size of Hebron um, that maybe there's got to be some other solutions. And I guess that's the way I'm looking at it. <clears throat> As I say, everything has been looked at. It will continue to be looked at. Um, you know, if you go into the records and see why different sites have been stated as not suitable, a lot of the answers are there if people want to spend the 30 seconds to read them. Oh, absolutely. And I, I don't dispute, you know, the sites that you've looked at. I just, I just feel like there's got to be a better solution. That's all. And I, I do appreciate, um, again, like I said, all the time that, that has gone in so far. I, I guess I'm just not satisfied right now with the final solution that has been, you know, put before us. Um, and I feel like there's got to be something better um, at the end of the day. Yeah, and I just, I'm just worried about 30 years down the road. I'm worried about 50 years down the road when, you know, when we suddenly don't have a pristine water source, um, when our drinking water is gone, the values of our homes are gone, um, and what we had is gone. You can't get it back. And so I just feel like there's got to be a better solution. So, but I do appreciate the time you put in. It's just, I wanted to make that, that point. Dave, the, for the record, your last name, please. Uh, David Jones. Thank you. You're and the next, um, the next public comment is from Gabe. And Gabe, please state Good your evening. last name and your address. Good evening, this is Gabriel Ackerman, 138 Millstream Road. Um, yeah, so um, I, I heard comments here uh, with regards to uh, moving forward with a design cost. Um, I haven't heard, I mean, we brought this up in the last meeting that we'd like to, you know, hear um, of a plan B option. Um, and we haven't heard a plan B option because when this, if, if this does fail, probably should have a, uh, at referendum, we probably should have a plan B um, opportunity and alternate solutions like uh, the previous um, uh, public comments are, are a good option. Um, moving the salt mine, salt shed off of that, off of a, uh, off of the bedrock aquifer that's sitting there uh, that feeds our water supply would probably be a good, good, you know, opportunity, you know, alternative. Um, there, in speaking with the hydrogeologist in person, um, when I spoke to him directly in, in my house is down gradient to, as he described, uh, of this planned site, there's a bedrock aquifer that it's not if, it's when we get salt pollution and salt pollution can't be extracted from a you know normal means at a residential area, it takes a lot of energy it's usually an industrial size type thing. So there's not really any options for residents when you when you get salt pollution. That's what he explained to me and based on his years of knowledge. I would second the motion that uh, Kevin Tumiller uh, said or suggestion that we invite him to uh, speak uh, to the board and have public comment um, because I think that would be beneficial. I think this is a serious road that we're going down um, putting a salt mine over a bedrock aquifer that feeds all of our water supply. Um, it, 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 in fact, if this goes past in referendum and, you know, with the salt, salt shed there, I would consider moving. Uh, I have a great real estate agent. I'd offer to anyone else here. You know, I, I really, I, I'd, I'd be happy to know if any of the board of selectmen live in the area and understand the, consequences of having a salt shed over here. There's no way that any of the folks here can guarantee that there's no salt that would enter our water supply. The hydrogeologist is stating it's not if, it's when, okay? I'll just leave it at that. Thanks. Next. Andrea Latanzi is next. Thank you, Donna. Oh, wait a minute. No, go ahead. 
Can you can you hear me? Yes. Oh, you can. Okay, because my mic is spinning, so it wasn't connecting. Um, this is Andrea Latanzi again, uh, 151 Cannon Drive, Amston. And um, my question relates to um, how will the survey be organized and who will be um, creating and heading up the, the that survey project? Um, will it be by committee? Will it be by individual? Um, I know that there is a, a whole methodology behind doing public surveys. And so I'm interested in um, who might be doing that and what their qualifications are and how that will be presented. Um, I, and some of my thoughts are perhaps, um, perhaps forming a committee and asking other committee members or other organizations within Hebron, perhaps asking for public volunteers who would be interested in being on that committee so that you get a well-rounded group of people um, to maybe perhaps someone with some survey writing skills or writing skills in general, um, somebody that has um, a media um, focus because we have different populations within Hebron, um, different populations, whether they're savvy with computers or savvy with social media. There's lots of different, um, different factors to consider when you're put, you know, putting out a public survey like this that mm -hmm. affects each and every resident that lives in town. Um, so um, those are just, those are some of my general questions that I've been thinking about. How are you going to organize that? And we have the same questions and that's why we are looking at, you know, the possibilities, what the possibilities are of getting a professional company that does this kind of stuff. Would Next. that be the company that you referred to before? I not positive D the dka from bloomfield that is one of the things that they do do but i don't know if that is going to go forward at this point no idea but this is what we're trying to work is it's getting something that is informative without being leading our next public comment is from jean tulamary Oh, good evening, and thank you for taking my comments, and I hope you can hear me okay. Yes. Okay, I would like to draw the board's attention to a professor in Blacksburg, Virginia, and you might want to read his reports. He has been doing studies on the negative effects of storm drain waste ponds, and he feels that they create highly contaminated plumes of sodium chloride that are then released into our environment. And if we're going to release the storm drain pond into the wetlands above the middle stream on Kinney Road, we will be injecting highly concentrated amounts of sodium chloride, according to their study on storm drain ponds. Now, since we don't have any idea what kind of a pond you're going to use, we don't have any idea on how the water will be treated before or after it goes in the pond. People are pretty concerned about having concentrated amounts of sodium chloride dumped into this particular wetland, which is apparently spring fed. And on a second question I have regards the company of BL who will be designing the facility and we wonder what experience designing salt sheds does this company have? And are there other facilities they have designed that we can go visit or look at to see if we like, like their work and if they're like good at their job? So um, thank you very much and look for Professor Joel Snodgrass of Blacksburg, Virginia. He works at Virginia Tech and his work has been cited in over 52 magazines and by over 150 authors. So he might hold some good information that we would want to learn from. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, 
I will say that there will not be any ponds. This the salt shed planned, from what I have been led to understand, is a completely and totally encapsulated structure, both above and below ground, so that there is no escape of any kind of waste water that does not get treated and then put into the uh, sewer system. It's a new system, a new concept, and this is why the professor had never heard of it, never s seen it. Um, you know, and I, I don't want to get big into discussions on this. We really shouldn't be, but um, here again is the misinformation that's going out there. Um, it's it's yeah what we want to your, do your, i'm sorry but your pictures on the internet have a storm pond on them even the newest one so then i guess i have been misled because it says a storm pond and mr tierney said the storm pond wastewater will be released into the wetlands november 17th 2022 mr snodgrass reports have come out in 2022 that is this year so that is my mistake because your drawings have a storm treatment wastewater pond on them. It's 1,120 feet away from Kinney Road uphill. And that's my misunderstanding that Mr. Tierney said they would flush the water into the wetlands. So I am, you know. Well, this is, as I say, so this is where we need to find, find out what the accurate information is. So, so is um, the is the drawing inaccurate on your website? I have not seen the drawing. On the town of Hebron website for the plan of for the whole public works? I have not seen the latest drawings. Just saying that. So okay. this, these are okay. discussions. Well, maybe, that... maybe I haven't either. Maybe the new new drawings have no storm wastewater pond 1120 feet above the road that could be my mistake too uh, okay. mr chairman i'll jump in i don't normally do this under public comment because that's what it's supposed to be but for clarification there is a pond on the property that's going to take care of the parking lot surface water the structure that's going to be proposed that's going to store the salt has a drainage system underneath a rubber membrane that goes into an oil water separator and then goes out and is discharged into the sanitary sewer, not into the groundwater or not into uh, the wetlands. There will be catch basins on the facility for parking lot, just, you know, rainstorms and whatever not. Those, instead of just being distributed into the wetlands, will be into a, into a pond and then that will release into the, into the wetlands like many other subdivisions or or structures within Hebron. But the salt shed is gonna be self-contained with a drainage system underneath it that goes into an oil water separator tank and then into the sanitary sewer and pumped down to East Hampton to the treatment plant. But that's not designed That's not designed yet, so that's why we're not showing that. That's why we have to get final designs and bring these, these companies on board to do that. But even, even parking lots, even parking lots have salt and oil and other things that get released into the pond. It's it's for impervious surfaces go into the storm pond, correct? Uh, uh, no argument there. Okay, and it would be the truck traffic also that drives through the parking lot. You park, you drop people off. So it's parking lot, impervious surface runoff goes into the storm pond with contaminants that will then be flushed into the wetlands after they settle. Is the pond treated with chemicals or does it just settle? Ponds not treated with chemicals. The worst contamination from salt is the application on the roads. Even Mr. Wazika will tell you that. I've had right. conversations with Right, I agree with, with you. I agree with you. And we do salt the parking lots. We salt and everything. Yeah. Ro right. Roads and parking lots, yes. So there is a chance that a storm drain waste pond from impervious surfaces would contain sodium chloride that will be released into the wetlands. That is a possibility. No more of a possibility than what we go down your road with the spinner on, putting it on in that brook that's right there by the edge of the road. That's unfortunately, until they come up with another product, that's the product of choice. 
Okay, so that is our concern because there will be extra sodium chloride released from the impervious storm drain pond into the wetlands directly adjacent to the houses there. Okay, so I that's that's what that answers my question. So I would recommend to read Joel Snodgrass's report because it's really well written and it makes a lot of good common sense and he's done a lot of work with water and storm drain ponds and things like this. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Hearing none, I wish everyone a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. We don't meet again until next year. So, Have a thank great you. Holiday. Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Dan. Welcome.